Steven, they tell us that uh, we take Star Wars too seriously. Yeah, I mean, we hear this a lot. It's, there are reasonable people who really believe that all movies, you know, Star Wars, Spider-Man, Lord of the Rings, that this is escapist entertainment and that people have a right to disconnect from the real world, that their lives are stressful and they just want to go to the movies or sit down on the couch and they want to think about something else. Yeah. And I, res I respect that, but I've never watched these movies ever, even as a child when I was literally trying to escape from all the things that were stressing me out as a teen, I did not not see a message in these movies. I thought yeah. there was a reason that we were watching Anakin Skywalker become Darth Vader, and it was a warning, not about fictional things, but about real things that could happen with you. No, I like, I remember in Revenge of the Sith, like the whole, the whole central thesis, the whole idea of Anakin's fall was the result of him trying to control the things that he couldn't control, or at least shouldn't control. Love won't save you, Padme. Only my new powers can do that. Yeah, everybody deals with that. You know, the, the story for me that Star Wars really revolves around is when Shmi Skywalker says you can't stop the change mm. any more than you can stop the suns from setting. I don't want things to change. But you can't stop the change any more than you can stop the suns from setting. Like, if you pushed me to say what is Star Wars about, it is that. Every character from Anakin to Luke Skywalker, that's what causes Darth Vader to become Darth Vader. Mm. And for me, I, you're always grasping in your real life for your child to stop growing up, for the economy to stay strong, for yeah. inflation to stay low, all these things. You know, I, I draw on Star Wars. I remember these lessons from these movies. I, I know that they're meant to be entertaining, but I just don't believe in escapism as an idea. It's interesting because one thing we've been talking about a lot as we're working on the Geeky Stoics book, spoiler, that's the thing we're working on, um, but we were talking about like, what are the sort of central themes of Stoicism and these stories that we love? Because there's a lot of, there's a lot of overlap with philosophy and Star Wars, and that's always been a thing, but like, we talk a lot about the idea of wonder. Luminous beings so we, not this crude matter. You must feel the force around you. And to me, that's the ideal form of escapism. That's when escapism is transcends a, a, a baseline of like mm -hmm. wanting to escape the world you're in, but actually take things from these stories that are applicable to us. I'll get extra geeky on you here. Uh -oh. So while we're in this beautiful forest here, we're in the Manassas Battlefield mm. Forest in Northern Virginia, and C.S. Lewis has a passage in one of his essays before he wrote The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe in the Chronicles of Narnia. And it's an essay on how to write for children and how to write fiction. And it's about escapism. Because even in his day, he had critics who would sort of mm. lambast children's stories and fairy tales as being a ridiculous waste of time. Yep, yep. And, and he would say, no, these stories matter and impact people's real outlook. And he said about forests, he said, no man has learned to hate real forests because of enchanted forests that they read about. Yeah. Uh, so the idea being that when you read about Narnia, when you read about Endor and all these like magical places, that then when you go mm. to a real forest, your imagination is bigger. Yeah. You actually start to see things in the woods that you didn't see before. And for C.S. Lewis, this was the whole idea of putting on different glasses by which to see the world. Yeah. A lot of his writing had to do with changing the lens that you had on life. And so his idea was when you watch a movie, it's a new pair of glasses to see the real woods. And mm. I experienced this when I was a kid. I mean, everybody yeah. does. You watch Star Wars and then you go out into the woods and you just like, <laughs> you want to play, you know? Yeah. You see Ewoks 
you pretend that there's a scout trooper over in the distance with a sniper I think rifle. There is one actually. There's one right there. Uh. And so like even in that way, it's not escapism. It enters your real life. Yeah. Uh, in an imaginative and wonderful way as a child. But as an adult, you draw on different things that you don't leave on the couch after you've watched the movie. Yeah. I mean, it, for me, it kind of reminds me, uh, like a big part of my Star Wars fandom has actually been revisiting some of the filming locations associated with the stories. Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> and for me, it's, it kind of reminds me of this, Stephen, because yeah. like, there's a strange magic that connects the story that when you're in the physical environment where it was shot, that you do have that connection of like what the story meant to you, but also like that feeling of it translating to and impacting the your real life. Like it is, it's hard to it's it, if you haven't done it, it's hard to like explain. But like even being in the like the the redwoods in California, or like when we went to Skellig Michael, it, it is that sense of awe based on the story, but in the real life. So I think for for us, it's that escapist question about whether or not we read too much into these things that you know I just I don't I don't really connect with it I want people to enjoy Star Wars and enjoy Lord of the Rings it ha literally has to be enjoyable otherwise nobody cares <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, true and nobody buys a ticket George Lucas was emphatic about this he did this panel he reminded the audience that families have only so much money in their bank accounts and you owe it to them to make a movie that they are willing to spend money on. And a great reminder for snobby filmmakers who <laughs> resent the audience for not wanting to see their, yeah. their snobby movie. <laughs> yeah. You actually have to make a movie that is fun and people are willing to spend their limited dollars on. And so that's what great storytellers do. They make something wonderful, but it should mean something. Yeah, and that's where, that's the beauty of how pop culture connects with philosophy because it's philosophy is the story of of human existence and how we think about the world and there's no greater conduit to philosophy than storytelling uh, which is kind of the thesis of geeky stoics i should write that down uh, yeah you should <laughs> you know keep a wild mind and let that guide you through your adult life it makes us better may the force be with you so. oh and with you <laughs> May the force be with you. Always. <laughs> Fail. Oh, yeah. You gotta do another take. Another take.